Morrowind is one of those games that if you can think of it, you can do it. But when it comes to beating the game, can you still do anything? Today I've been tasked with beating the game using throwing weapons. Things like throwing stars that don't normally deal a ton of damage and most people try to avoid. But am I able to take these rather mundane items and turn them into weapons of mass destruction? Let's find out. Unlike other challenges where the challenge begins at character creation, this one began at simply trying to get the game to run. Being a game from 2002, getting it to work on modern hardware was a bit of a rough task. But after 30 minutes of trying to get it run via Steam, I tried running it through Xbox Game Pass on PC and finally we could begin the challenge. Starting aboard a ship, I named myself Sure He Can because it sounds like shuriken and I have only failed a small amount of tasks, so I figured this would be a breeze. But then I made my character. And might I say, the character creation of Morrowind is rather interesting, not because of the race options and presets, but how the devs tried to pass off aliens disguised by only a description of what they were supposed to be. I ended up going with a Breton mainly for the magic bonus and no major drawbacks, and continued inside to finish out my character, and honestly these stat choices don't really matter here, but I did pick the mage sign to be born under for more magicka. Now that I was free to walk around, it was time to make some money, or simply borrow some very expensive things. Since this is a tutorial area, getting caught stealing or fighting people is written off and forgiven. However, in the case of stealing, if I were to take something, a guard would come and take it back from me. But if I dropped the item on the floor before they got to me, the guard would take back nothing and I could just retrieve the item off the floor. So after stealing anything that wasn't bolted to said floor, I offloaded my haul to the local merchant and made my way to Balmora. I did purchase some spells before I left, but it turns out that they're not actually necessary for this run and I will show you why. Inside Balmor, I was greeted by a horrific sight of an Argonian walking and then made my way to the Mage's Guild. This is where the magic happens. I asked to join by saying I pinky promised to use my powers for good and then proceeded to also steal everything not bolted down to get some more cash. Trust me, this money would mean more now than it would for the rest of the run. So now came part one of the setup. Morrowind is one of those amazing games where magic is absolutely busted. As far as magic goes in most open world RPGs, it's pretty insane. But Morrowind takes it a step further by allowing you to make your own spells. And the results are nuts. Normally a setup I've seen is fortifying an attribute and then adding the soul trap property to the spell. But there's a much easier method that requires no spells prior so you're able to save your money to buy lots more later. Turns out you could just go to the spell crafter and make a spell with a property of fortifying the attribute of your choice, with a target of yourself with a magnitude of 100 to 100. And then another property to fortify the same attribute but set the range to target and leave everything at zero. What this does is allow you to take a temporary buff due to the first cast, and due to a targeting exploit, you make that buff permanent. And the best part is, is that it stacks. Although, watch where you cast this. Todd Howard sent an assassin after me while I was setting this up, and not one mage in this guild attempted to help me. I'm pretty sure they were all intimidated by me becoming a god before their very eyes and decided I was too powerful to be left alone. So, to make sure this never happened again, I bumped my strength, willpower, intelligence, personality, and endurance to about a measly 10,000 each. But this was only step one of the run. Now that our stats were mildly boosted, it came time to procure the weapons to actually do the run. But sadly my camera was in the way of the stats, but trust me, you'll see what true power looks like soon enough. Now, when doing this boost, be wary of increasing your speed. I bumped my speed up to about 400 and the results speak for themselves. But if you really want to push the limits of what this game can handle, I'll show you at the end what happens when you mess with speed magic. While I was hanging out in town, a guard decided to admire my gorgeous looks, but I couldn't get distracted with that and headed over to Vivek to buy some throwing weapons. Or I would've, but I got so lost in this place that I never actually found the weapon vendor. However, since I could outrun Sonic at this point, I took a very scenic route to get to a town called Surin. Here was a very kind orc weapon vendor who sold chitin throwing stars. Normally these are pretty bad when considering damage output, but they get a strength bonus to that damage 
And since we have over 10,000 strength, the results are, uh, pretty sweet. So sweet, in fact, I even scored some new gear as a reward. Now that I could throw a throwing star with enough force to level an entire city block, it was time to take these puppies all the way to Dagothur, the main baddie and the last obstacle to beat the game. But while I'm traveling to his hiding spot, we have to go over some technicalities. To beat this game normally, there's two magic weapons you need to actually defeat Dagothur, and since this challenge is for throwing weapons only, I am going to skip those and attempt to beat him without them. After arriving in his volcano lair, I dispatched through his minions and his ghost and went to show him my pointy stick of doom, except I died. So I decided to boost some more and bumped all my stats up to 18,000 and tried the fight again. But after a couple of throwing stars later, I did manage to kill him, but only to be taunted as I ran to his heart and barely scratched it after 40 stars. I tried again at 24,000 for my strength, and even though the boss went down faster, the heart still did not. Not giving up, I rose my stats to 40,000, and even though I did enough damage to create craters bigger than the planet, it wasn't enough. I'm not gonna lie, this wasn't looking very good, so in an act of desperation, I drained all of my magic reserves and rose my stats to about 55,000, and still could not kill the heart. You can't regain Magicka by waiting around like the later Elder Scrolls games, and you have to rest until fully healed to regain the Magicka, so I was running out of options here. However, I decided that if I could prove it could be done using console commands, then I would go out of my way to finish the run. First I tried 60,000 strength and did about 75% damage to the heart. So I tried 70,000 strength and it still wasn't enough. With one final attempt, I bumped my strength all the way over a hundred thousand, and finally, I had a success and the heart was defeated. But by doing this, the game doesn't play out the scripted ending, and the game softlocks. Meaning that without those two magic weapons, you cannot beat Morrowind using only throwing weapons. Hell, you can't beat Morrowind using any specific weapon without those two. It's not often we fail a run, but it makes for a fun challenge anyway. Since the run was dead and I was stuck, I decided to play around with the speed, and turns out if your speed is high enough and you run, you can actually run straight through walls and outside of the map. And if you get stuck, you can just jump and the game will center you in on an entrance. It's pretty neat actually, but if you go outside and run off a cliff, or any kind of slope for that matter, you will be launched across the globe so fast that the game will literally crash. This game is great! If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a ton. Plus, if you have a suggestion for a challenge run you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. I play all sorts of games, so no challenges off the table. I want to thank all of you that watched it to this point, and as always, I've been Chris from Crisis Gaming, and I will see you on the next one.